Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. During CitizenCon 2953, there was a panel that talked about loads of new spaceships that would be coming to the game and vehicles over the next 12 months. And they showed 10 of these in a sneak peek type fashion. So they showed them at odd angles or partially obscured, some in just white box, some a bit further along. And I want to talk about each of those 10 different ships and vehicles, talk about what some of them might be, because we know what some of them are or we know what sort of hull some of them are, uh, and others we don't know so much. The first one they showed was some form of bike. There was two of them, so that's likely mean that there is two variants uh, of this, and it kind of looks like a baby hover quad, just a very, very small hover vehicle, which sort of makes sense. Traveling on the ground is very much going to be a thing in Star Citizen. You're going to land your ship somewhere and then travel around uh, on the ground. Sometimes you're just going to be traveling on the ground. You might not have a ship for a long period of time. There'll be reasons why you can't bring ships into certain areas because of defenses, because of hazards, because they're underground. But having something that's very small and compact to be able to put in to a lot of different ships so you can then drive it out is a great idea. And I think that whatever these hover bikes are, they're probably just incredibly small. One of them looks like it might have some pew pews on it, some, some weapons. It's hard to tell. It was quite blurry. Tell me what you think going on with those in the comments below. The second set of um, things we saw were the Origin X1 hover bikes three variants of that. There's the standard X1, there's the X1 Velocity, which is the racing variant, and there's the X1 Force. The Force is sort of a little bit more stealthy, I think, but also a bit more combat focused. The X1 and the Force both have size one weapons, but they're very much luxury as far as jet bikes and hover bikes go. The third thing they showed was the Urza Rover. So assumedly this is going to be a variant of the Urza Rover, either for medical scanning, building, something like that. Lots of people think it's going to be a medical version. If you see a vehicle for building, it's probably going to be done with the Atlas chassis, which is used for things like the Ballista. But yeah, some form of Urza variant there. Um, again, what variant do you think we could actually see turn up? Number four. This looks to be an Argo MPUV, so if you actually look at it, it's quite spindly or whatever, but it just looks like the central module has been removed to me. Now, I'm expecting a tractor beam version, a utility, or able to pick up a single big cargo crate version of the Argo MPUV here. So yeah, just, just some of sort of uh, additional utility version. It's likely going to be something that's relatively useful for larger ships to have uh, a snub on board that can do one of these tasks sort of thing and um, that that would be my expectation it could be a huge range of other stuff it could be for repair it could be for rescue it could be it could be a medical one that there, there's tons it genuinely could be again interested to know what you think number five we don't know zin and i looked at this we discussed for a while is it what could this be? Could this be uh, the Apollo? Could this be um, a small Carrick? Could it be uh, the Zeus or something? There's loads of stuff we went through and went, no, it can't be that. No, it can't. Oh, no, it doesn't even look like that. Oh, it's too small to be that. It's too big to be this. It looks like an RSI ship, probably. Probably a new ship. It could be the new RSI mining ship. It does look quite combat E to me though, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's combat. I mean, the galaxy looks like a, a full on combat ship and, and is uh, a little bit more utility orientated. There's also little inklings of Aegis and Anvil in there, like it does look a bit like a small Carrack. It's hard to see these sort of angles and they are obscuring stuff on purpose. I'm really interested to know what you think that is, especially. Six. It's a new ship, some form of new ship, unless I'm uh, mistaken. It's far too big to be a Fury. It looks like a big fat Fury, but um, I I'm expecting this is a new ship from Gatak or a hybrid alien ship or an alien ship or something from Mirai again. It could very well be a Mirai ship because it's very similar or gives me similar feels to a Fury, but is much, much bigger. It's sort of forward facing, pointing. It feels like it's quite aggressive shapes like it could be like a docking claw or it could be one big gun but it could also be an underwater vehicle or something like that I, 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 or exploration thing because it looks like it might have a lot of view space to it potentially a very open cockpit we don't know again but it, it looks cool it's something we can go oh i wonder what it is what do you think it is number seven that's the legionnaire legionnaire very cool little drop ship it's going to take marines to uh, another ship or to land on a at a facility and they can assault it when you're attacking ships it can sort of bypass the docking clamps and docking collar of another ship and sort of forcefully allow you to dock with them so it's a bit hacky there as well really like the idea of it when you see one you know you're going to be boarded number eight 
confused me for a little while because I was like, it looks a bit like the Zeus Mark II, but the flaps aren't like that. I just think that the wing flaps are down, It's and it's the Zeus Mark II. This is the recently announced concept ship, the Zeus Mark II, that was um, unveiled at CitizenCon, and there's three variants. There's a bounty hunting variant, there's a cargo variant, and there's a sort of like the multi-role but very tanky variant. It's classified as a medium ship, but it's sort of competing more with the Constellation and the Mercury Star Runner than it is the Freelancer and Cutlass. The bounty hunting variant of it as well has just got tons and tons of equipment on. It's got an EMP, it's got a quantum dampener, it's got an armory, it's got prisoner pods. It does have less cargo space, admittedly, because of all of that. But it's got like an extra turret and stuff like that as well. Very cool ships. Looking forward to them being on our hands within the next 12 months. That sounds awesome. Number nine that they showed was the Retaliator. Now, I did a Freudian ship earlier <laughs> where I said it was the Redeemer. It is the Retaliator. Um, obviously, we have the Retaliator in-game at the moment, so this is going to be a Retaliator variant, or it's going to be the base model and potentially sort of the modules for it, and um, what could be one of the sort of modular settings for it, like the cargo one uh, or the dropship one. There's lots of stuff they could do here, and um, it could be an entirely new variant, um, or it could be, yeah, it's the base version, and we're allowing you to now put the modules on, because they, we do know they are working on modularity, and um, obviously it's part of the resource management system and fiscalization of components and all that sort of jazz. Retaliator, very cool ship. Obviously, at the moment, just the torpedo one, which is incredibly dangerous um, in-game, but um, looking forward to that having more use and getting a bit of a refresh. We do also know that they are refreshing the Retaliator a little bit. Number 10, and the final one they showed, was the RSI Polaris. Now, I think that's going to make a lot of people happy that that ship's planned to be in our hands within the next 12 months. I would expect it to be one of the last few in that list to get into our hands as well because it is big it is complex however they did show that it's actually progressed quite far through its development cycle already it is a terrifying torpedo corvette um, but it's also going to be very suitable as a multi-role mission running ship it's got a, a little hangar bay so you can carry quite a large fighter in there lots of big armaments lots of massive torpedoes we do know that once the polaris is done cloud imperium will be working on if they're not already working on the uh galaxy and then the perseus and i believe it is in that order also cloud imperium said that there are 12 ships still to be released in 2023 ships and vehicles so it's possible a couple of those could be from that list also bear in mind that from that list of 10 sort of pictures that we saw and those uh, ships and vehicles that are planned to be in our hands within the next 12 months that does not exclude other ships also coming out within the next 12 months. In fact, I would expect more. Some other interesting ship information that came out at CitizenCon, uh, the Galaxy is going to have a base building variant that can build up to large buildings, and uh, the only thing that's larger than that is the Pioneer at the moment, which can build extra large buildings. There is going to be some sort of building vehicle as well, so um, that will be probably using the Atlas sort of chassis, I would expect. It looks like you will be able to get yourselves hover trolleys. Um, they're kind of pushable rather than vehicles. But, I mean, you're going to be keeping them in your ship. You're going to be running around with them. There is a ton of stuff coming out at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. We are expecting the Drake Cutter Expedition. We're also expecting to learn a load more about the RSI mining ship that's supposed to be pretty big. People are expecting to see an update on the Odyssey, but I haven't heard much about that. And it's likely that they're going to release the Storm Light Tank, the Spirit C1, and the Argo SRV all around the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo as well. Anyway, I should save all of that for another video looking at what's happening for the rest of the year and the IAE, and I will. I really want to know what you thought of our analysis of those 10 pictures that sort of Clown Imperium showed us of those different ships and vehicles, especially the ones that we didn't know. What are those sort of hover bikes at the beginning? What's that one that's far too big to be a Fury? And the, that one that looks a bit like an RSI ship, but it's, I don't know what it was. What else do you think we'll see at the IAE or within the next 12 months, ships and vehicles wise? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Toby Eye Tracker 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat, both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. What the hell are you? 
It's NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer, enabling you to minimize your presence on the internet, almost like a cloaking device. It also allows you to hunt out the best TV and movies and shopping deals by changing your region. It prevents big internet from gathering and using your personal data. There's even a data breach scanner and mesh net for your own remote private network included. When Zinn asked, what's the Predator movie got to do with NordVPN or CitizenCon or Star Citizen? I said, what's any of our NordVPN ads got to do with anything? Grab yourself NordVPN in the links below for a seamless, secure internet experience. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. For October 2023, we are giving away a Constellation Phoenix. This luxury multi-crew ship can be used as a mission runner, an explorer, a base of operations, and more. It comes with a luxury P-72 Archimedes snub, as well as the Lynx rover, allowing you to have on and off planet excursions. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. This is the bit of the video where I appeal to you to try and join the channel memberships and give us money. We have a load of you that are Patreons or have become YouTube channel members with the join button under my videos, and that goes a huge way in helping the channel and enabling us to make daily Star Citizen news entertainment. But there are a load of other ways to help us, liking, commenting, sharing these videos, that helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching to the end, please get involved in the comments section, and I hope you have a great October.